everyone. Glad to see you're excited to create your own interactive digital notebook. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to use Google Slides to create your own interactive digital notebook from scratch. Again, there are templates out there. However, creating the notebook from scratch will allow you to customize it to fit your needs as well as the needs of your students. Also, keep in mind there are several ways to navigate through these slides and several ways to create this. I'm just going to show you one way and I'll keep it very simple in this tutorial. That way you understand the basics. So on one side of my screen, I'll demo the live view for you. And on the other side of my screen, I've created actual slides that will be shared with you for your reference in the future if you would like to create your own interactive digital notebook. I hope you enjoy. So to create your digital interactive notebook, we're going to use Google Slides in our Google Suite apps. And so once you access Google Slides, you will access a new presentation. And from here, we're going to give it a title. And in this case, I went ahead and gave it the Language Arts Notebook title. And I do have my slides on this side. So in case you need to reference them, the step-by-step -step guide is right here. And I do want you to pay attention to page setup because this allows you to customize the size of your notebook. In this case, I went ahead and chose 8.5 by 11 and I pressed apply. And then from there, this will customize the size of my slides. And I do also want to bring to your attention how to create master slides. And you would just go to slide and then edit master. And so what this allows you to do is create master slides that are stored here so you do not have to create new slides every single time and rebuild and recreate the slides to your liking, what you could do is create them once, store them in here, and then access them anytime you need to for your notebook. And so today, again, we're going to do the foundation of your notebook, right? Create the foundation of your notebook, and these may just be the basic steps. And so let's start off with creating our cover. And in this case, I do want to create my cover, and when I create my cover, Sometimes I'll use a background and insert it as a background, but in this case, because I do want to have tabs on the side, I'm just going to insert an image. And so I'm going to press insert and I'm going to click image and then search the web. And normally you would have to type it in, but because I've searched this numerous of times, it's going to pop up automatically. And I'm going to choose this notebook here and click it and click insert. And then from there, I get to size my notebook the way I want to. And in this case, I'm just going to stretch the notebook, the image, and I want to leave room on this side because I'm going to add tabs. All right, I'm going to add tabs a little bit later. Okay, So I did put two ways as to how you can create your notebook. And I did the easy way and then, of course, using the Edit Master Slides way. Okay, Now, for my notebook, I want to insert a text box and that way my students have that opportunity to type their names on the front cover. And so I'm going to insert text box and place the text box right here. And in this case, this notebook is going to belong to Noreen Guzman, okay? And I'm going to increase the size and I want to center it. So I'm going to center the font there. And then I want to change the color of the font. So let's go to text color and make it red. And I want to make it bold because it's the front cover. And so there I have who this notebook belongs to. All right. So again, we're building the foundation of our notebook. And now we're going to move on to adding pages to my notebook. Now, how do I add pages? So I'm going to need to insert a new slide. So I'm going to press new slide. And then from here, I'm going to search the types of images that I want to insert as my notebook pages, okay? And so in this case, I'm going to press background and I'm gonna choose an image. And again, because I've searched it before, it automatically pops up, but I would search notebook paper. And then I'm going to choose this paper right here and press insert and then done. Okay, so it automatically inserts the background. Now the cool thing about this is if you notice, I click it, it doesn't move. And because I inserted it as a background, 
when my students click on this, they will not be able to move this paper. Okay. Now let's go ahead and add tabs. If I wanted to add tabs, then I'm going to insert it to the front cover. And again, inserting tabs just allows your students to know what are the parts of this notebook and how is it organized. And it's good for them because they, wait, they know that you've organized this a particular way. And in order for them to access certain parts, they will know which tab to go to. So how do I add tabs? Let's go ahead and insert shapes. So I'm going to go to insert and then I'm going to go to shape. And I'm going to choose this shape right here. And I'm going to draw my shape out. And after that, I'm going to turn it because I'm going to put it on the side of my notebook. Just make it a little straight there. And then from there, I'm going to drag it and put it on the side of my notebook. I may need to adjust it a little bit more. And I want to change the colors. So I'm going to put, I'm going to make it pink. I like the bright colors for the tabs. And I'm going to give this tab a title. And in this case, I'll put journals. And I want to center this and so I'll highlight it and I'll go and adjust it to be centered and I want to increase the font so I'll go ahead and just increase the font there. Now you might want to adjust it so it looks like it's really a part of that notebook and then from there what I do want to do is I like to add in a drop shadow that way it enhances and it makes it a little bit more appealing for the students. So I'm going to go to format, format options, and then just add a drop shadow. Okay, click that and then get out of that area and then maybe adjust it a little bit more. Now what happens if I wanted to create a new tab? Do I have to constantly create tabs and insert shapes? Not necessarily. You could do that. However, you could also control C click out of that and then control V and then of course that copies and pastes a new tab and then of course you can change this to make your next tab All right and I'll just make this tab assignments and I might have to decrease the font so that it fits into the tab all right, and so I've created tabs. Now my students know how my digital interactive notebook is organized. Now again, this is just the foundation of the notebook. Uh, now what you're going to do, of course, would be to insert your pages and add more slides, and that will be the foundation of your notebook and how to create the basics of your notebook. Now let's get into looking for ways to enhance this notebook for it to be more appealing to our students and make it more interactive. And now what happens if I wanted to insert images so that it will help with teaching the skill or the activity I'm trying to do in this notebook? Now I would go to insert image the same way I did earlier with inserting the cover, search the web, and in this case, let's search up school clip art. And I want to select this particular photo and then I'm going to click insert. And so this will select the image of the skull and insert it into my notebook. Now, what happens if I wanted to link or hyperlink images so that every time my student clicks on this image, it's going to take them straight to our GDOE website. What I would do is select the image and go to insert link up here. And then I'm going to need the address of our GDOE website. So in another window, I'm going to search up our GDOE website, get the address, copy it, and then go back to our image and link the address by pasting it in that box and then clicking apply. So every time my students click on this image, it's going to take them straight to the GDOE website. So that was just how to insert links and hyperlinks. Now what if I wanted my students to click this tab and then it'll take them straight to this part of the notebook? Well, what I would do is select the image or get yeah, the image or the tab. And then from there, I'm going to right click and I'm going to click link. And I wanna link it to that particular slide where the GDOE website information is. And so 
Let's go to slides in the presentation and it's on the next slide. So I'm going to click next slide and I'm going to apply that. And that way when my students click it, it'll take them straight to where we want them to be, at, which is the next slide of this where the GDOV website is featured. Okay. And so again, if they click it, they're able to go straight to the website where we have linked it to. All right. And so what happens if I wanted to insert a form, right? Maybe I created a form using, of course, our Google Forms. And so what I would do is I would need to get the, the link of the actual form. And so I'm going to go in my drive and I'm going to search up. And in this case, I've created a form for weekly oral language. And I'm going to take it, click that form and click send because I want the link and take the link, copy it, and then from there, what I want to do is I want to paste it in my notebook, right? Because if I wanted my students to complete this task, I'm going to copy and paste it and make sure that it's linked so that every time my students wanted to access this, it'll be quick for them to access. So I'll just highlight it, link it by pressing the link when I right click. And then that'll take them to the form all through my digital interactive notebook. Now, those were just some basic ways to enhance your notebook using images, links, and part of our Google apps, uh, our suites, which is, of course, our forms. And so those, again, are just the basics of building your digital interactive notebook. One challenge your students may deal with is the idea of them manipulating and rearranging your Google Slides. And so in this case, I have a theme sort activity where students will have to sort the themes versus the theme statements and put them in the boxes. And so this is just one way, but I inserted the actual table as a background and the only objects or items that the students can manipulate or shift around are these text boxes that they need to sort for this particular activity. I do want to also include in this presentation some add-ons that I thought were useful. And in this case, I recommended Moat and Slip and Slide. These are Google Chrome extensions. And with Moat, the cool thing about this extension is that it is a voice note extension. And so you can add voice notes to your actual slides and when your students play the voice note, they can hear an explanation of the slide or the activities where you will give them directions through a voice note. Or in some cases, if my students completed a particular assignment or even a journal response, I would give them feedback using the Moat voice note extension. And another add-on that I wanted to talk about was Slip and Slide. And with slip and slide, what you can do is you can actually insert slides after you have assigned the assignment or the interactive notebook. And that way, throughout the school year or throughout the quarter that you use the notebook, you can slip in a, a slide for your students to access. That sums up the basics of building your digital interactive notebook. Again, this is just one resource that you can use with other different Google Suite apps plus different Google Chrome extensions all to combine them in one assignment that you can use in your Google Classroom. Thank you for going through that tutorial and I hope you found it useful and helpful for you as you build your digital interactive notebook. In the next tutorial I will show you how to integrate this digital interactive notebook with Google Classroom.